Hello everyone, this is Falcon Laser, and in this video, I'm going to show you my surround sound system. Now you may notice I have another video of my surround sound system that I made about four years ago, but since then I've made some huge improvements to it, so that video is out of date. Anyway, well, I'm here in my dorm. I took a two-year break from college after I made that first video, which is why I'm still here at college. But this is my last year here. Anyway, well, let's start looking at my system. First, I have a Nevo C3 Universal Remote. It has a touch screen, and I've programmed it to list activities like play music, watch movie, and auxiliary. And say I want to watch a movie, I just press it, and in one screen press, the remote will turn on everything needed for that activity, which includes the TV, the Blu-ray player, and the AV receiver. And it'll set the AV receiver to the correct input, and it's ready to go. And the buttons on the remote will control the Blu-ray player for this activity. Anyway, let's look at my TV. It's a 32-inch Sony Bravia KDL 32L5000. It's by far the lowest tech part of my system. I got it back in 2009. It only goes up to 720p. But it works, and I care more about sound quality than video quality anyway. As for my source components, I have a Sony BDP S570 Blu-ray player, which is this thing right here. I also have a 60GB PlayStation 3. I got it through GameStop refurbished since I mostly just play my old PlayStation 2 games. And yes, I do know the PlayStation 3 can play Blu-rays. However, I got the Blu-ray player before I got my PlayStation 3. And I was thinking I may someday get a 3D TV, and a 60GB PlayStation 3 can't play 3D Blu-rays. And my PlayStation 3 won't work with my Universal Remote, so using my standalone Blu-ray player is far more convenient. And finally, back here I have a 160GB Apple TV that I use as a music server. Anyway, now for the AV receiver, I have an Anthem MRX300 which I'd say is my most valued component in my system. Anyway, Anthem is a sister company to the speaker company Paradigm, except Anthem makes amplifiers and surround sound processors. And up until a few years ago, everything they made was very high-end, as in an amp surround sound processor combo easily costing over $10,000, and as much as about $23,000. But they came out with some AV receivers a few years ago that began at $1,000, and I got the $1,000 one. It's a little odd when compared to other $1,000 AV receivers, even at the time it came out. It only has four HDMI inputs, it lacks Wi-Fi, audio through USB, and other features you'd expect a $1,000 AV receiver to have. However, in terms of sound quality, it blows away a lot of $1,000 AV receivers. And despite the fact it's only rated as 60 watts per channel with all channels driven, it still can get louder than all the so-called 100 plus watt per channel AV receivers costing less than even the same. Which shows a lot of AV receiver manufacturers aren't entirely honest with their power ratings. So you could kind of think of this AV receiver as a sports car. It may not have all the amenities, but it does have performance. Also, it has a very intricate microphone calibration feature called Anthem Room Correction, or ARC, which is also the basis for Paradigm and Mark Logan's Perfect Bass Kit. While most AV receivers out there have some sort of room EQ feature, Anthem's is considered one of the best. Anyway, let's start looking at the speakers. I still have my Paradigm Series 6 Atom monitors for the fronts which are the oldest components in my system, but they still sound awesome. Anyway, for the center, I have a Paradigm Monitor Series 7 Center 1. Here, take the grill off here. A few years ago, Paradigm refreshed the Monitor Series, and I got the entry-level center speaker just a couple months after the new models were released. And as you can see, compared to my old Adams, they completely redesigned the drivers and they got a boost in sound quality over the old monitors. Eventually, I would like to upgrade my Atoms to some Series 7 Monitor 7 towers, so I would have matching fronts, and then I'd use my Atoms as rear surrounds, but that won't be for a while. And this setup works fine for now. 
Here we'll put the grill back on the speaker. It has this cool magnetic grill, just snaps right on. Anyway, speaking of the surrounds, let's start looking at them. For the side surrounds, I still have my Paradigm Cinema ADPs. They're dipole surrounds, as in they have drivers shooting off in two different directions, as you can see here, which ideally makes for a good surround effect. But I've actually discovered that after getting rear surround speakers, which you'll see in a bit, in this room, these speakers actually sound better with one side pointing directly outward. In fact, it's a little weird. If these are set up with the driver shooting off to the side and are playing at the same time the rear speakers are playing, these are hardly audible. It's as if the rear speakers cancel these speakers out. Anyway, and here's the other one over here. It just has the grill on. Anyway, speaking of the rear surrounds, here they are. They are Paradigm Cinema 110Cs. One of these is my older center speaker that I had before I got my monitor center one, which you'll see in the older video of my system. And the other one I got from my family back home, who doesn't really care about it. So I am running 7.1 surround sound in this room. While yes, I know these speakers shouldn't be this close together, I really don't have any other placement options. The best I can do is just point that one on the left up there off to the side so it shoots more towards the listening area. Anyway, finally, let's look at my subwoofer. I still have my Paradigm PDR-10. Let's take the grill off here. It has a 10-inch driver, 120 watts continuous, 360 watts peak. Can really get this room shaking. Anyway, put the grill back on here. Anyway, while it's not exactly a part of my system, I have a MacBook Pro that I got a year ago, which has replaced my old black MacBook that's seen in the old video of my system. And as an aside, I got it customized with 8GB of RAM and a 256GB solid state hard drive. And to connect it to my system, I use a mini DisplayPort to HDMI cable. I very often use my TV as a separate display, so it's very useful. Also, you see there, there's an iPod dock right by my TV that I solely use for docking my iPod on so I can use my system as an alarm clock. Anyway, we'll put the grill back on my Atom here. So anyway, well, that's my sound system. And oh yeah, for those of you who think Bose critics don't like Bose because they can't afford it, well, I'll have you know my system, excluding my TV, Blu-ray player, PS3, Apple TV, and computer, is worth about the same as a Bose lifestyle system. So if I don't like Bose because I can't afford it, then why do I own a system that costs the same? To use an analogy, telling me I don't like Bose because I can't afford it would be like a Ford owner telling a Toyota owner you don't like Ford because you can't afford it. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Anyway, well that's it. Thanks for watching.